Ladies and gentlemen, look at this beautiful and interesting exercise we have here. We need to find the shaded area in the figure. Let's do it. Notice we have three squares here. The square whose area we want to find, this large square that's rotated, and this square over here with an area of 2. Let's start by finding the side of this small square. We know that the area of a square is equal to the side squared. You'll agree with this, right? So the area of this square is 12. Alright, and this is going to be equal to the side squared. To find the side, we are going to take the square root of both sides of the equation and will disregard the absolute value properties plus minus because we only want the positive part as we are talking about distances. We simplify here and there and ladies and gentlemen, the side is equal to the square root of 12. Fascinating. We already have the side of this square here. It's the square root of 12. Very well. From here to there, it's also the square root of 12. Excellent. Now let's label the sides of the square whose area we want to find. Let's say it's side x, so x here and x there. We're going to say the big square has side y. Y here, Y there, and also Y here. Excellent. Now, what are we going to do? We are going to draw a line from this vertex to this vertex here. Because it turns out this vertex is the diagonal of the big square and also forms a right triangle with these two sides. Notice that. So this line here serves two purposes. Very well. Knowing this, we can find this blue line, which we'll call L. Well, let's call it M since we've already used L, right? Let's call it M and using the powerful Pythagorean theorem, we're going to find this M because here we have 90 degrees. Notice that. We see how okay, one side is on the other side of a right triangle, we're going to use the Pythagorean theorem. M, which is the hypotenuse, is going to be equal to the square root of one side squared plus the other side squared as well. Very well. So, we have a M is going to be equal to, and what are the sides of this right triangle? It's Y and Y, so we have Y squared plus Y squared, very well. Alright, we have M is equal to the square root of Y squared plus Y squared, so it's twice Y squared. Taking the square root of Y squared, we have M equals Y times the square root of 2. Great, we already have here, ladies and gentlemen, this blue line here. It's y square root of 2, excellent. Now we're going to draw another line from here to this vertex over here, like this. And we can also find the value of this red line. The same way we used to find this blue line. Because now we have 90 degrees here. This side measures x. This side also measures x, and this is the hypotenuse. Again, using the extremely powerful Pythagorean theorem, but this time faster. We'll say this line, which we'll call n, will be n square root. One side squared plus the other side squared. x squared plus x squared gives us this here, but with x right, 2x squared. Taking the square root of x squared, uh, we get n equals x times the square root of 2. Fantastic! We have this part here. Yes, it's the square root of 2. Fascinating. Now, pay close attention to this blue triangle that's going to appear right now. Take a look. This right triangle, because there are 90 degrees here, we can use the Pythagorean theorem to see what happens here, right? So let's do it. We're using the extremely powerful Pythagorean theorem for the third time, saying the hypotenuse squared is equal to one leg squared plus the other leg squared. Well, who's the hypotenuse, no? Let's see the so so well, so da, as soon as hypotenuse this is here. So we have y square root of 12, this squared, which will be equal to side A, which can be this or this one here. Let's say this is side A, since from here to here is x, and from here to there, the whole side would be x plus square root of 12. So we have here, x plus square root of 12. This squared, side A plus side B, which logically is this other side. The square root of 12 also squared. Alright, let's work this out. Y squared is y squared. The square root of 2 squared is 2 here, right? The square root of 2 squared is 2, but it looks horrible here. 
So we'll put it on this part here. All right, we have 2i squared. Over here, we have a binomial. The first term squared would be x squared plus the double product of the first by the second. 2 square root of 12 and finally, we'll put this x. And then the second term squared. The square root of 12 squared. The exponent simplifies with the index and we're left with 12. The same happens with this here. Plus 12 then. Excellent. We have 2y squared, and this is going to be equal to x squared plus 2 square roots of 12x, and 12 plus 12 is 24. Alright, we know how to add, don't we? We have an expression here in terms of y and in terms of x. What we are interested in is having this equation in terms of x, right? So let's find the way to have y in terms of x. Look, what do you think if I tell you this angle here is equal to this angle over here? Well, you might ask how? And well, let me explain. Let's call this angle angle A. This angle we will call angle B and this angle angle C. Great, here appears a red triangle. Take a look. Alright, now pay close attention because angle A, sorry. Angle B plus angle C is 45 degrees as I know. Look at this red line here. It's the diagonal of the square whose area we need to find, right? It's the diagonal and since the diagonal of a square divides it into two angles of 45 degrees, then from here to here is 45 and from here to there is also 45. Alright, then we can say that B plus C equals 45 degrees. Great! And we also know that A plus B is also 45 degrees. No? How? Now pay close attention to this big square. What is its diagonal? It's the blue line. And from here to here, it's 45 degrees. Because as we said, the diagonal divides it into two angles of 45 degrees. So this angle is 45 and this one here is also 45. But the one I'm interested in is this one here. Now we know that A plus B also equals 45. Alright, and we can use this here. We can equate these two equations because they are both 45 degrees. We can say that B plus C, B plus C equals A plus B, A plus B. And look how wonderful this B cancels with this B. And we've concluded that angle C is equal to angle A. Magnificent. Then we can say that instead of C, we can write A. And say this angle is equal to this angle. Look, did you notice? Yes, these two angles are equal. And now, pay close attention. We know there's a 90 degree angle here because it's the angle of the large square. In this red triangle, we have a 90 degree angle and angle A. And in the blue triangle, we have a 90 degree angle and angle A. Therefore, these two triangles, since they have two equal angles, are similar triangles. And we can relate their sides. Let's erase everything here and we're going to keep only what interests us, which is this here, okay? Let's erase it quickly. Very well, and let's write this down here. 2y squared equals x squared plus 12. Sorry, 2 times the square root of 12x plus 24, very well, plus 24. And now let's move these triangles here to make it clearer what we're going to do. Yes, we have 90 degrees here. The hypotenuse is B times the square root of 2. The base is all this here. X plus the square root of 12. And this side here is the square root of 12. But I'm not interested and you'll soon see why. We're going to move this red triangle here and also flip it to the other side like this. Very well, we have the 90 degrees here. Notice, we had angle A here, and we also have angle A here, right? The hypotenuse of this triangle would be this part here, which is x times the square root of 2. And the base would be this part here, which is y. Let's put the y here. And look, why didn't I need this part? Because I also don't have this part of the other triangle. So we can say this is to this, that the hypotenuse is to the base, as this hypotenuse is to this base. So we write it like this. Look, y is the square root of 2. 
s to this base, which is x plus the square root of 12, as the hypotenuse of this triangle, which is x times the square root of 2, is to this base, which is y. Excellent. Let's erase this here, because it was only to explain how to find this relation here, and erase the triangles. Very well. Now let's move this y to the other side to multiply, and this here as well to the other side to multiply. On the left side, we'll have y times, we times the square root of 2, right? This times, this times the square root. And this will equal x times the square root of 2 multiplied by this here. By x plus the square root of 2, great. Now pay close attention that there's a square root of 2 on both sides. We can divide by the square root of 2 on both sides of the equation. Square root of 2 here and square root of 2 here. And look how amazing all this simplifies here. And y times u is u squared. And this is going to be the same. Look, we're going to apply the distributive property straight away. x times x x squared. Very well. x times the square root of 12. x square root of 12. Or we can also write it as 12 square root of 12 times x. Magnificent. And now what are we going to do? We're going to replace this here. And we'll have an equation only in x. Let's erase this here very well. And we'll get 2 multiplied instead of y squared. We'll put this here, x squared plus square root of 12x. And this is going to be equal to all of this here. x squared plus 2 square root of 12x. And here we have plus 24. Phenomenal. Very well, we apply the distributive property. 2 times x squared, 2x squared, and 2 times this term. First we'll put 2, then the square root of 12, and finally the x. And this is going to be equal to x squared. And since you are very smart, you must have already noticed that there is something on the left side and the right side that's the same. Look, 2 square root of 2x and 2 square root of 2x, goodbye finite. See you. And here, ladies and gentlemen, we have 2x squared. Move it to the left side, minus x squared. And this is equal to 24. And ladies and gentlemen, by Odin's beard and by the power of Grayskull, we have here 2x squared minus x squared, x squared, and this is going to be equal to 24, 24. What? Square units, ladies and gentlemen, because this here is already the solution. The shaded area is 24 square units, because what we were trying to find was the area of a square of a square of side x. Therefore, x times x, x squared, which is the solution. Fascinating and unexpected, right? Let me know in the comments if you like the video and don't forget to subscribe and give it a like so you don't miss the next challenge. See you another time. Bye bye.